He says, welcome to the frickin' Guardians of the Galaxy. Only he didn't use frickin'. Hey, welcome back Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. Okay, we have a brand new Guardians of the Galaxy after Volume 3, and we are going to explain this new cosmic team. Rocket Raccoon is the leader and captain of all these new Guardians. Now, other than Rocket and Groot, though, there are five new members on this team. So, let's do a full breakdown of every new Guardian and what will be their future after Volume 3. Also, I'm going to tell you about some other cosmic heroes that might join the Guardians of the Galaxy in the future. Some of them are already in the MCU, and others will be major cosmic heroes in the future. You seem like a noble leader. Will you join me on my quest to Nivitalia? Uh, let me just ask the captain. Oh, wait a second. It's me. Yeah, I'll go. Wonderful. Okay, now before I go over the new members, let's first talk about the remaining original members. Starting with my personal favorite, Rocket Raccoon. He is the leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy, or shall we now call him Captain? I won't go into the whole near-death experience Rocket had in Volume 3 because we already did a full breakdown of this scene in our Ending Explained video. Was it heaven, divine intervention, a simulation, or did it all happen in his head? Doesn't matter. What's important is how this experience changed Rocket. He accepted who he really is. He confronted his maker slash tormentor, and he's free to forge a new path for himself. And this new path is leading the Guardians of the Galaxy. Time to be the captain. And in case you doubt his leadership skills for some reason, let me remind you that Rocket has been a Guardian longer than anyone else. The entire team was wiped out in Infinity War. Four of them got dusted and Gamora was chucked off a magic cliff. Only Rocket survived. But what about Nebula? True, Nebula survived as well, but at the time she was not an official Guardian. Nebula only became a full member post-snap. So Rocket has the most seniority among the Guardians. In addition, Rocket and Nebula held down the fort for those five years after the snap, a very difficult time in the galaxy. And they also formed an alliance with the heroes on Earth. Also, Rocket proved that he's the real captain when giving Thor some really good pep talks in Infinity War and Endgame. You think you're the only one who lost people? What do you think we're doing here? I lost the only family I ever had. It's not Rocket's fault that the older Thor gets, the dumber and more fragile baby he becomes. So, Rocket has the experience and the ability to lead the new Guardians. And he's also an adoptive father to Groot. Oh, why's that? Well, in case you didn't know, the Groot who sacrificed himself in Volume 1, he died for real. Baby Groot is his offspring, and since Rocket took care of him since he was just a twig, that makes him his dad. In fact, James Gunn even confirmed that Groot's last words in Infinity War were, Dad. And Groot grew up to be a very big boy. He went from being swole Groot to colossal Groot. I'm not even sure he can fit in the Guardian ship at this point. That is one big damn tree. Yeah, how did that start big? Well, actually, I have a cool theory about that. We don't know much about the origins of older Groot, but in the comics, Groot grew up on Planet X. That's the home planet of his species. That means that his size was restricted by the gravity of his world. Baby Groot, on the other hand, grew up on a ship, so without the strong forces of gravity, Groot's body can grow much bigger than his father's. Well, it's either that or I guess it's an alien tree, and that's all the explanation that you need. I'm Groot? Actually, Groot sort of looks like King Groot now. Wait, Groot is a king? Well, you see, in the comics, there was an evil version of Groot decades before the more lovable Groot was introduced. Back in Tales to Astonish number 13, that's the ancient times of the 1960s, Groot looked like this. Now that is King Groot, an evil alternate version of our favorite tree guy. Another version of King Groot also appeared in the fighting game Contest of Champions. This one became a galactic warlord who experiments on humans. So Groot's gonna turn evil? No, 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 this is just a fun visual reference to King Groot, but you never know, we might see some other Groots in the future. Of all the members of the Guardians, Groot is the least developed character. So if there will be a volume four, then it could explore Groot's story and we might even see the evil King Groot. All right, that's Rocket and Groot, so let's switch up to the new Guardians. The first among them is... Adam Warlock. Yes, Adam is one of them, but before we talk about him, there's Kraglin. Now he has been around since volume one as part of Yondu's Ravager clan. Kraglin was Yondu's loyal first mate, except for that one time he helped start a mutiny. Sorry about all this stuff. Kraglin was already an official member of the team after Endgame. We see him fight alongside the Guardians in Thor Love and Thunder. Now after Yondu died in Volume 2, Kraglin got his badass fin. That's this whistle-controlled arrow, which might very well be one of the best weapons in the MCU, as long as you use your heart to control it. Now, in Volume 3, Kraglin struggled with the arrow because he didn't believe that he could fill Yondu's shoes. But after seeing Yondu's force ghost, Kraglin uses his heart to control the arrow, meaning that he believes he's worthy. Whistle arrow spaceman! You know what? I like that. High five. Now, Kraglin's future is kind of uncertain right now. In case you didn't know, the actor who plays Kraglin is Sean Gunn, and he is James Gunn's brother. 
Volume 3 was James Gunn's last MCU movie, at least for now, since he's now the Kevin Feige of the DCU. John Gunn has already made the transition to DC after playing Weasel in the Suicide Squad, a movie that his brother directed, and he will also voice Weasel in the animated show Creature Commandos. So this credit scene might be the final appearance of Kraglin in the MCU, and that would be a great shame, but at least we got some new cosmic heroes to fill the void. And now you're finally gonna talk about Adam Warlock? Oh yeah, it's Adam frickin' Warlock time. So the movie version of Adam was created by Aisha from the Sovereign, but since the Golden People were genetically engineered by the High Evolutionary, that means that he was also responsible for Adam's creation by proxy. Unless the High Evolutionary did have an active role in Adam's creation, and this would explain why Adam is so powerful. Adam is extremely strong. He can pretty much heal from anything. Explosions, being stabbed, you name it. He can shoot energy blasts, and he can fly. So he's like a golden superman. Dude, you have no idea. Adam is stacked when it comes to cosmic powers, and chances are that he's going to be far more powerful in the future. You see, Adam is kind of undercooked. He came out of the birthing oven way too soon. And that's why he's so weird. Yeah, well, he's basically still a child. He doesn't understand the difference between right and wrong because he was raised by Golden Cersei Lannister. You have running. <laughs> So give the kid a break. Anyways, since he was taken out of his birthing pod too soon, his powers are still developing. So by the time he reaches his full potential, he will be on the same power level as Thor, Captain Marvel. In fact, in the comics, Adam Warlock is one of the most powerful and important cosmic heroes. I'm kind of a big deal. Many of Adam's powers come from the Soul Stone. You see, in the comics, Adam has a deep connection to the Infinity Stones. Prime among them is the Soul Stone, which is jammed into his forehead. So like the Vision. Yeah, well, the MCU kind of stole that idea and then gave it to the Vision. I'm not amused. But in the MCU, the gem in Adam's forehead is just a pretty rock. It's not a rock. This is a mineral. He also has a strange frenemy relationship with Thanos, and he is a founding member of the Guardians of the Galaxy in the comics, at least the new version. Now, there is also so much to explain about Adam Warlock, and as it happened, I dedicated an entire video to him, why he's so cool, and what his future could be in the MCU. We laid out some awesome theories that tie in directly to the Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars. The video is a lot of fun. I highly suggest you check that one out, and the myriad of other videos we've done covering Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I want to get a closer look at this. Anyway, the Adam in Volume 3 shares a bond with another new Guardian, and that is Phi Lavelle. Both of them were genetically engineered by the High Evolutionary. Actually, so was Rocket. And speaking of Phi Lavelle, she might be another powerful cosmic hero. In the end credit scene, we see that Phyla possesses some abilities. There's a glint of purple energy in one of her eyes. She's also able to create spheres of purple energy around her hands. She's just a cosmic girl. Very good, yes she is. Now, I wonder if Phi Lavelle is special among the other children that were created by the High Evolutionary, and if she is the only child with abilities, and that is why she was allowed to join the New Guardians. Otherwise, they wouldn't let a kid join a group of space heroes, right? I mean, they let a baby twig join. They did let a baby twig join, so who knows? I'm good. Anyways, that's all we know about Phi Lavelle in the MCU, but if Marvel adapts any of her stories from the comics, she's gonna be a big deal in the future. In the comics, her name is Phi Lavelle. She is a powerful cosmic hero who helped assemble the Guardians. Phi Lavelle is a unique hybrid. Her mother was an Eternal from Titan, the same Titan that Thanos is from. She was genetically engineered by her mother from the Kree blood of Marvel. That's the first Captain Marvel in the comics. And her brother is Genis Vell, and he's another cosmic hero in the comics who became Captain Marvel after his dad's death. Phi Lavelle also became Captain Marvel for a while, as well as the cosmic hero Quasar. So that's some of the big connections with Captain Marvel and the Marvel's movie, as well as with the Eternals. She also wielded the Nega Bands. Now these are powerful cosmic bracelets that were created by the Kree. And Ms. Marvel's bangle is probably the MCU's version of the Nega Bands. Phi Lavelle also wielded the Quantum Bands. Now those are the other powerful bracelets from the comics that give the wielder near-infinite cosmic power. And later, she was one of the founding members of this new iteration of the Guardian. So yes, this girl has a lot of space backstory, but it's uncertain how comic book accurate this Phyla will be, considering that she was created by the High Evolutionary. But Adam was genetically engineered just like Phyla, and he's really powerful. Also, don't forget that the High Evolutionary isn't creating life from scratch. He's using existing beings to improve the team. He didn't want to make things perfect. He just hated things the way they are. So that means that some of the other comic book stuff could be adapted into the MCU. And this brings us to the final new Guardian, Cosmo. Oh, Cosmo's, Cosmo's my favorite. I really like Cosmo. She's, she's a good dog. She's a good dog. Yes, this good dog is actually very, very powerful. She is a dog that was experimented on by the Soviet Union. That's how Cosmo got her abilities. Oh yeah, so that's why she can talk. Actually, no. Cosmo can only do that because of her collar that translates her thoughts into telepathic sound. 
Yeah, I guess talking to animals are kind of silly. One of her main abilities is telekinesis. She's actually really powerful since she was able to hold the high evolutionary ship with her mind. Now, in the comics, she's also a strong telepath. Also, I guess I should mention that in the comics, Cosmo's a boy and not a girl. In the 1960s, Cosmo was sent into space and she eventually was found by the Collector who kept her in his museum on Nowhere. And after she survived the explosion of the Collector's museum, Cosmo was freed from being a museum piece. And about nine years later, she joined the Guardians after they bought Nowhere. One of Cosmo's major roles in the comics was forming the Annihilators. That is a team of some of the most powerful cosmic heroes. Cosmo assembled the team to serve as a continuation of the Guardians. And we might actually see some of these cosmic heavy hitters in the future of the MCU. One of them was the Silver Surfer, and of course, he connects to Galactus. So, I wouldn't be surprised if the Silver Surfer crosses his cosmic paths with the Guardians sooner or later. In fact, he might even join the team. So, those are all the new Guardians of the Galaxy. Wait, 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 what about the weird space cat? Right, that's Blurp, and I'm not sure if he can be considered as a new Guardian. Blurp is Adam's pet. I like him, so he's part of the team. Okay, fine, he's on the team. So, those are the brand new members of the Guardians of the Galaxy. So, now, let's go over some other cosmic heroes who could join the team in the future. Some of them are already in the MCU, and others will likely be introduced in the coming years, and I am going to save the best one for last. Promises, promises. One of the other notable members of this team is Moon Dragon. Oh yeah, like a cool space dragon? No, not exactly, but she does transform into a space dragon for a little while. Moon Dragon is Drax's daughter. But I thought his wife and child were dead. True, in the MCU they were killed by Ronan, but in the comics, Drax's daughter survived. It was Drax who died and later came back to life. Moondragon was raised on Titan after being taken in by Thanos' father. She was trained by space monks, and through vigorous training, she became an expert martial artist and a powerful telepath. She was also possessed by an evil demon dragon called the Dragon of the Moon, hence her name, Moondragon. She had to fight that dragon inside of her for most of her life, sort of like Jean Grey and the Dark Phoenix. Now, eventually, she got the ability to transform into a space dragon herself. Also, Moon Dragon and Philovel are a couple in the comics. Was she in the movie? Not yet, but the ending of Volume 3 just opened the door for her introduction. Drax and Nebula adopted all the kids that the High Evolutionary was experimenting on, and that included Phyla. Now, one of those kids could be the MCU's version of Moon Dragon. So, instead of Drax being her biological father, he will be her adoptive father. And considering that Phyla has abilities, it's possible that the other children have powers as well. And it's not like Drax and Nebula will take care of every single child on their lonesome. The rest of the nice people on Nowhere will take in other children. Yeah, adopt a kid and you get like 10 cents off your space gas. That's a horrible deal. I would never agree to something so deplorable. How about free space gas for a year for just taking care of a kid? <laughs> I will take two kids, please. Uh, adoption! All right, next potential new Guardian is one of my personal favorites, and that is Nova. Nova, aka Richard Rider, is one of the most important cosmic heroes in the comics. He's basically, what if Peter Parker became the Green Lantern? That's actually a really cool what-if idea. Now, Nova has all the cosmic abilities that a space hero needs. He's part of the Nova Corps, who are basically like the Green Lantern Corps. In the comics, the Nova Corps get destroyed on Xandar, and then Richard is chosen by Raman Day to become Nova. Actually, the Nova Corps get wiped out a lot in the comics. They're like the Jedi Order of Marvel. And Richard is always the surviving member who then rebuilds the Corps. The Nova Corps was introduced in Volume 1, and Richard Rider's origin story was pretty much told off screen. Nova and Xandar got decimated by Thanos when he took the Power Stone, so that could be how Richard becomes Nova in the MCU. Nova was a major character in the Annihilation storyline. That was actually a major cosmic event. We actually talked about how Marvel should adapt that story in this video. This is also a story that led to the formation of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and Richard was one of the leaders of the team over the years. He also hooked up a bit with Gamora. What? Well, who should be him in the MCU? Dude, I would love to see Jensen Ackles play Richard Rider in the MCU. Now, I know he's been fan-casted by everyone for pretty much every role. I'm Batman. But I can totally see him pulling this off. He might be a little old for the role, though, so another great choice would be Joe Keery. He has all the charm that will work so well for Richard, a kid who had nothing going for him until he was chosen for a great cosmic purpose. Someone who's always the underdog. He keeps getting knocked down, but he keeps getting up and saving the universe. Actually, it's only a matter of time before he joins the MCU, and it could start with him joining the Guardians. In fact, this will tie into the story of another Nova from Earth, Samuel Alexander. He was trained by Rocket and Gamora after becoming the new Nova. This is my mentor. Mentor? <gasps> uh. 
Another cosmic hero that joined the Guardians was none other than Carol Danvers. Now, I don't see the MCU's Captain Marvel becoming part of the team, though. She's more of like a big-time Avenger now. But I could totally see Monica Rambeau or Ms. Marvel joining the Guardians in the future. Now, Monica makes a lot more sense, because Kamala will probably end up joining the MCU's Young Avengers, a team of young heroes who Marvel might be creating for Phase 6. Maybe in the end of the Marvels, Monica gets stuck in space. Then she meets the Guardians and joins them. And this brings me to two of the most badass members of the Guardians and the comics, starting with Agent Venom. So Venom is officially part of the MCU after No Way Home. Eddie Brock was sent back to his universe, but a part of his symbiote was left behind. And one of the best stories for the MCU's Venom would be Agent Venom. So in the comics, Flash Thompson joined the army. He became a hero and in the process lost both of his legs. After that, he bonded with the Venom symbiote. Now, at the time, the symbiote was in possession of the government, and they wanted to create a new super soldier with this Venom suit. And that is how Flash became Agent Venom, one of the coolest anti-heroes in Marvel Comics. And years later, he joined the Guardians of the Galaxy. If this happens in the MCU, that's something that's probably years away. But Venom in space? I mean, how badass would that be? How has that not even happened yet? That's some badass shit. It's pretty badass. And speaking of badasses, imagine this. In an alternate universe, the Punisher dies in a battle where Thanos wins and kills everybody on Earth. He's sent to hell and makes a deal with Mephisto, becoming the new Ghost Rider. Ooh, that's pretty cool. But there's more. He goes back to Earth, but there's no one left to punish. So he goes completely insane. And then he makes a deal with freaking Galactus and becomes Cosmic Ghost Rider. He literally rides his flaming bike in space. And to make it even wilder, Thanos kills Galactus and Cosmic Ghost Rider ends up working for him, going back in time to kill the younger Thanos. This story is freaking insane. Okay, all the nerding out aside, Cosmic Ghost Rider did join the Guardians for like a minute, but eventually he joined the Dark Guardians, and they are basically the bad boy Guardians of the galaxy. Could Cosmic Ghost Rider happen in the MCU? Why the hell not? Bring back John Barenthal as Frank Castle, make him a Punisher from a different timeline where Thanos had won, and then turn him into Cosmic Ghost Rider. I mean, seriously, I cannot think of a reason to not do this. It sounds incredible. Shut up and take my money. And there were many other heroes who joined the Guardians of the comics. Too many to go over in a single video. But some of them include Hercules, Beta Ray Bill, Wendell Vaughn, Gladiator, Kitty Pride, Super Scrawl, and even Iron Man was in the Guardians. And of course, some of the original Guardians might rejoin the team in the future. Star-Lord is confirmed to return, and Mantis' self-discovery quest will probably lead her back to the team at some point. So these are the new Guardians of the Galaxy and some of the other heroes that could join the team in the future. What do you think about this new team? What other heroes do you want to see join? Let me know in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe, smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.